Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Mindset and Manifesting Podcast. My name is Lena, and I have a special guest today. Her name is Spool, uh, Spooling, Julie Smith Speechens. <laughs> you know, sometimes I get so excited that I mispronounce my words. It is what it is. So uh, Julie is a Reiki master and teacher, and she is also a psychic medium. She actually has she um actually has a lot of titles because she practices um several different types of reiki so i can have her talk about that if she'd like but um i wanted to have her on today she's such a beautiful soul and um i wanted to just get talk to her um about kind of her experience with reiki how she got into it and then really want to talk about medical reiki because that is um, something that's becoming more and more available in um, in hospitals and stuff. And I think it's important to get that information out there and um, just kind of how that, how that works in the medical setting, I guess you could say. All right, so Julie, I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you, thank you, Lynn. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, so as you mentioned, um, there's a lot of alphabet soup <laughs> going on after my name these days. <laughs> I, I, I seem to be sort of, um, uh, passionate is the positive word, right? Obsessed might be the <laughs> more judgmental word, but <laughs> I just kind of, I, I want to learn all the things and do all the things. And, and honestly, Reiki's been such a powerful tool in my life that I just can't seem to stop going down that rabbit hole. And it's, it's bottomless, really, it's infinite. There's so many different kinds of Reiki and different lineages and different, um, you know, energies you connect with. Um, and, and like you mentioned, the medical Reiki, of course, is a personal um, oh, passion of mine. Really, I get really excited about it because, as you mentioned, it's coming. It's something that's growing. It's gaining speed. Um, there's this wonderful pioneer in medical Reiki. Honestly, her name is Raven Keys, and she wrote this incredible book. Um, called Medical Reiki. And her story is fascinating. It gives me goosebumps just to talk about it. Um, she was actually on the ground after 9-11 for eight months, giving Reiki to the first responders. Talk about a group that needed energetic and emotional support. And her story led her into the OR with Dr. Oz. You may have heard of him as he was doing open heart surgery on one of her Reiki clients. And she was able to administer Reiki throughout the procedure. And the phenomenal experience she had with that really just led her on this incredible journey um, to create um, this these um, gold standards of medical Reiki practice that she um, taught for years. Sadly, she recently passed away, but she has other teachers now in her stead who are continuing her work and her program. Um, and what I love about medical Reiki, um, my background's environmental science. I um, was an environmental consultant. I was an IT project manager. We're talking left brain. I like the science of things. I don't want to just believe in something because someone else told me they experienced it, that it's real, that it worked for them. Okay, that's excellent. Now I want to feel it for myself, which is why I love Reiki because I can feel it working. I can feel the tingling. I can feel the heaviness, the floatiness, the heat, the cold, the peacefulness. You know, for me, it really opened everything up. I went searching for Reiki um, as most healers do. I got into it first off for myself. I never thought I would ever treat anybody or have a studio or teach or any of this stuff, of course. And you know, the universe was just giggling at me in the background as I <laughs> felt my way through it all. but. Um, for me, I found Reiki because I was dealing with all of the human stuff we're all dealing with. I had corporate burnout. I had physical pain. The universe literally put me in a wheelchair to try to get me to tune in and slow down and pay attention to my energetic and emotional health. Um, at the same time, I, uh, my dear friend from college was in a horrible car accident and her eight-year-old son was killed. I didn't know I was an empath. Here I am walking through that grief journey with her on top of everything else I was feeling. And, and I tell you, I, you know, there were days I was just, I was numb. I was in full robot mode. I was just desperately trying to find a way to connect to something more, something bigger, some purpose and passion in my life. And that's why I went looking for Reiki and thank goodness I found it. 
Yeah. It's been, you know what, it, for me, um, I had tried Reiki year, like, oh my goodness, like years ago, um, because I was trying to figure out how to, I was trying to figure out if it would help me with my anxiety and depression, right? And the gentleman I saw at the time, I walked away and I thought, oh, this is it for me. That was way before my awakening experience, right? Way before that. Way before I realized that I was um, perhaps more, I was sensitive to energy, right? It's probably why I was dealing with anxiety and depression um, because I wasn't understanding what I was feeling and seeing. And then now I'm at a different point on my journey, right? And I um, went looking for to get, or wasn't really looking for it. One of the girls I was coaching, she was like, uh, this lady I see, she does my readings because you're also a psychic medium um, and she does Reiki. So that's how I found you. And when I found you, I was trying to figure out what do I do with this energy that I'm feeling now in my body, right? And these um, downloads and these kind of visions I'm getting because I'm in tune with energy that's not really mine. So how do I figure all of this out? So that's how I found you. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, and with the Soul Journey Sundays that you do, and we could talk a little bit about that too, um, some of the things that you offer. Um, it was really nice to connect with other people, right? And um, get insight from other people and kind of in the smaller groups, you know, some people are wanting to connect with, you know, loved ones that have passed on. Some people are just kind of wanting other information, right? Kind of wondering about ailments in their body and things like that. So it's really interesting to connect with other people who are sort of going through the same things or wanting answers to certain questions because I never I've never really connected to a group of people like that until I found you and going to remember my first session with you and being able being on the table and then um being able to feel the energy right and then being able to uh connect to my guides and stuff at the same time I was used to doing that a little bit meditation but it was so interesting being on the table and being able to feel that in, you know, in my body. And again, I think a lot of people like years ago, I thought it was kind of woo. -woo. I was like, yeah, energy. Yeah. Right. That's going to work. And now I had, you know, now I have a completely different uh, feeling about it, which is why I took uh, your Reiki level one and two classes because I wanted to figure out, okay, what can I, what can I do with this? Not only for myself, but can I help other people as well? So um, do you want to talk about a little bit about what you do as far as um, the the other things that you offer? Sure. Yeah. Um, and before I do that, I'm going to backtrack a little bit and just build on something you said, um, because it's so common. You know, I'll say that, right? I mean, this all sounds like madness. I get it. But this is normal in my world that a lot of people... Um, receiving Reiki certainly, but even more so when they take the Reiki classes, they do what's called the attunements, um, which for, to our human minds, to our left brain, it looks and feels like a guided meditation. You know, I'll let people peek behind the curtain here a little bit who are wondering, well, what happens in a Reiki class? What's all this about attunements and, and whatnot? Um, looks and feels like a guided meditation, but in the background, what's really happening, I call it like an energy infrastructure upgrade. That's one way to think about it. It's like putting in a, a bigger water main to your house or putting in higher speed internet to get that better connection. Um, to me, Reiki is not something we're learning. It's something we're dusting off and remembering. It's something that's innate. It's part of all of us. It's chi, it's prana, it's life force energy. It's unconditional love from God, source, the universe, however you see it to be. And learning how to tap into that how to amplify it, how to use it for ourselves and for other people is huge. And um, specifically for me, one of the reasons I get so excited about Reiki and why it's completely changed my life 180 degrees is because six weeks after I took my masterclass, my psychic mediumship opened up. 
Um, I had a, a friend, a Reiki guinea pig on the table. And all of a sudden I'm about midway through her session. And I just, I become aware of her mother in spirit who I never knew on the earthly plane, but I knew her name started with a P and had two syllables. I knew she loved houseplants and I knew she'd given my friend a necklace for her 16th birthday. But <laughs> then of course I'm arguing with myself, right? I'm not a psychic medium. What if I'm making this up? What if I mention it and it hurts my friend's feelings? I'm gonna need someone new to get my toes done with. <laughs> you know, What if she thinks I'm nuts, right? As the humans do, I'm doubting myself and questioning myself the whole rest of the session. But what really gave me the confidence and the courage, frankly, let's be honest, it's a trust fall. It was a courageous thing I had to do to mention it to her was that her mother washed me in the most incredible feeling of unconditional love. And I mean, like that, that nurturing motherly, just wash me with it. It was, it was emerald green. Uh, before that moment, I wouldn't have told you emotions had a color, but the feeling of unconditional nurturing love from the other side to me in that moment felt emerald green. And I just had tears streaming down my face. I'm standing at my friend's feet like, man, if she opens her eyes, she's going to think I've lost it, <laughs> you know? But in that moment, when I felt that love, I knew, A, I'm not manufacturing this. This is not my imagination. I cannot produce that feeling of love within me. If I could, I would do it every second of every day. <laughs> I would live in heaven on earth, right? And I thought, how dare I? How dare I deny them? the opportunity to have this reunion, to have this moment that will reinstill within her the faith that, you know, yeah, we do have an eternal soul, that yeah, her mother hasn't gone or disappeared, you know, that she is still with her, is still part of her life. And so, of course, um, when we exchanged notes afterwards, I said, I know this sounds crazy, but did your mom's name start with a P? Did it have two syllables? Did she love houseplants? Did she give you a necklace for your 16th birthday? And she just started sobbing. God bless her. Her mother's name was Pauline. And she had a whole room in her house dedicated to houseplants. And my friend was wearing the necklace that her mother had given her for her 16th birthday. Irrefutable evidence. You yeah. know, it just, and since then I've been in every workshop and seminar and practice circle. I've read every book. I've done all the mentorships. I'm hooked because God, what greater healing can there possibly be to know that our loved ones are not lost to us. They're still around. They're still part of our lives. And anyone, I truly believe this, anyone can learn to become a psychic medium. I didn't grow up having experiences where I had ghosts and angels visiting my bed at night. I didn't know anything about my neighbors or who was going to cross over in our family. I didn't have any of those beautiful experiences that so many people talk about. For me, 100%, I can draw a direct line. My psychic mediumship opened up with my Reiki training. Yeah. I, you know what? I believe that because since I've since I've done Reiki sessions with you and been in the groups, Soul Journey Sundays a few times, and also I have another coach who was doing past life healing with me. Um, I So I have the same thing happen to me with a couple of people in particular, I get really strong messages for. And I was apprehensive too at first. Do I share this, right? But the messages come through so strong. So for me as a teacher, as a spiritual teacher, I so the messages that come through for me are really not necessarily about loved ones and stuff. So there's some a lot of past life stuff, but it's really about teaching. It's like these little bits of information that come through for the other person as though I'm a messenger meant to share the information so that it like, awakens something within their mm -hmm. DNA, right? Because we all have this dormant DNA um, that awakens at different points on our spiritual journey. Now I don't hesitate. I share it because I'm like, you know what, if, if, um, if I'm, and I have to ask, is this really for this individual? And it comes through so strong. And now mm -hmm. I don't hesitate to share it because I feel like if I don't share it, then I'm not, um, I'm doing a disservice, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yep. because if I'm not meant to share it, it, why would it come through in the first place? And of course there's discernment there. Is this really meant for this person right. or is it meant for me? And sometimes a message is for both, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're masters, uh, or we're teachers and we're students always mm -hmm. right 
So yeah, Reiki's helped me in that, um, in that aspect as well. And when I do distance healing now, um, and I, you know, I don't do in-person sessions yet, but when I do distance, there's so much stuff that comes, that comes mm -hmm. through. It's just fascinating. So I'm looking yeah. forward to actually expanding and doing, um, and doing more classes and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, and you raised a couple of good points. The distant healing. I know our, our human minds, our left brains struggle with that. That's a hurdle for a lot of people. First off, energy healing is real. Come on, give me a break. It sounds woo, but it is. Yeah. Um, I always say just be skeptical, but receptive. It may change your life. <laughs> um, but second off, this idea of distant healing. Um, and it can be more powerful. Like you said, I think part of the reason... Um, that that's true is because all of the human stuff is out of the way. You know, as a as a practitioner, a master, a, you know, we call ourselves healers, even though we recognize it's the energy that's flowing through us that's yeah. doing the healing. It's not that we're doing anything. We're not actually healing anyone. We're, like you said, igniting their ability to heal themselves, right? To tune back in, to tap into their own soul energy. But all, all the human stuff is out of the way in a distant session. We're not worried. Oh, did I brush my teeth? Did I remember deodorant? Are they comfortable? Yeah, they're comfortable. They're in their own home, hopefully. Um, and I have a really fun story about uh, distant healing and I'll be brief, but I had this wonderful um, professor in college, um, my, my mentor, my um, advisor uh, in my environmental science degree. His name was Dr. Ed Passerini. And honestly, he was the smartest man I ever knew. He had a degree in physics from Harvard. He had a degree in literature from Virginia. He wrote all the books for all of our courses. I mean, really brilliant, brilliant man. And uh, it was a couple of years ago now, I was trading uh, practice sessions with a reader who didn't know me at all. Of course, didn't know anything about my college. That was a long, long time ago. And um, she starts describing my professor coming through, you know, as a mediumistic contact. And I said, gosh, it sounds like him, but I don't even know if he's crossed over, if he's passed. And so as she's talking, I'm Googling it. And sure enough, I pull up his obituary. He'd crossed over two months before. So isn't that a lovely piece of evidence for starters that she wasn't like reading my energy? I didn't know he'd passed, you know, mm -hmm. um, and hadn't thought about him, honestly, in a few years. And she says to me, um, Ed saying, you've stepped into a healing role and you're struggling with the idea of distant healing which of course I was, you know, left brain, left brain, right? How can this possibly be, be real? How can this work? And she said, and to this day, I don't know how you get a medium to say quantum mechanics, but she said, Ed is working with brilliant minds on the other side, probably Einstein, because that was his caliber legitimately. She said, he's working with brilliant minds on the other side. The science checks out. Quantum mechanics is amazing. Just trust it. I mean, I, that was it for me. That, I mean, that's straight. I don't know. What is that? Second hand, third hand? How does that work exactly? But yeah. I mean, from the smartest man I ever knew in spirit, telling us to just trust it, that quantum mechanics is amazing. We are all energetic fields, our consciousness, our soul, whatever you want to call it. And we are connected to everybody else. We are all within one big energetic field of consciousness. And it's fueled by pure unconditional love. And so we can tap into that. And as you mentioned, those first couple of years of development, Man, it was like a drumbeat in my head. Patience and trust, patience and trust, patience and trust. Yeah. I needed relentless validation. A, that people could feel the energy healing that I was offering them. Like, no, really, tell me this is real, right? I needed that. Yeah. I can't feel it when I do Reiki on myself to this day. It's, it's my own energy. It harmonizes with me perfectly. I can't feel it. I always say it's sort of like washing your hair. Yeah, you can do it yourself and you should, please do. <laughs> but man, it feels so much better when someone else does it. So even to this day, and really, especially with the readings, I have needed relentless validation, confirming the, the information I'm coming through. And I always tell all my students this, you will feel like you're making it up. So if you, if you, uh, you know, imagine an image of an apple, let's say, um, the, the place in your mind, if you envision it like a TV screen, let's say, where you see that apple, maybe it's green, maybe it's red, maybe it has a leaf. You know, take a bite out of that apple. Do you see the juice running down the outside of your apple? That screen, that TV screen in your mind where you're imagining that or remembering that is the same place that you receive impressions, perceptions from spirit. When you hear it frequently, it's gonna sound as if it's in your own voice. Because how else could it possibly get through to you? Your physical body, your physical senses are energy transformers, energy interpreters. And for your physical mind to 
perceive these impressions, those are the facilities, the faculties, the um, senses that spirit is going to use. That energy has to come through that that transformer, that interpreter. You know, just like um, um, any other piece of of mechanical equipment, you know, that works with with electricity or with Wi-Fi signals or TV signals or whatever. We have to receive it and translate it so that we can talk about it so we can share our experience so I think that's one of the biggest hurdles we have is we all go yeah what's the how can I tell if it's imagination or intuition yeah so I mean for me I always say you know imagination it's like that that movie um Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio if you remember it Mm -hmm. but when he's talking about how he knows whether or not he's in the dream is because suddenly he say finds himself in a restaurant and he has no recollection of how he got to the restaurant there was no train of thought. There was no train of experience. He just had a sudden awareness. He was in the restaurant. It's like that with intuition. There's no train of thought. You don't know where that thought came from. Why do I need to talk about pink bunny slippers or, you know, your the blue car that you painted green when you were 16 with spray paint or you know, whatever the you know the the evidence wow. is. There's no train of thought. It just boop. It pops in there. They've just made you aware of it. You've just felt it. You've just seen it. You've just heard it. Whatever it might be. That's one of the ways we know it's intuition, not imagination. Yeah, exactly. I'm so used to, and you know what? I I talk about cultivating awareness a lot and observing, right? Observe, I'm trying to turn around. <laughs> um, my foot was falling asleep um, and being in that observer mode. So for me, I have, I have conversations, telepathic, <clears throat> I call them telepathic conversations throughout the day now just a continual conversation with spirit things will come in because i've cultivated that that awareness right become the observer of my thoughts so i'm constantly aware now of these internal conversations in the manifesting community for those who know neville goddard's work um which i talk about a lot um it's called mental diet right be aware of your thoughts so I'm constantly having these commu- these conversations with myself, with my higher self throughout the day. And every once in a while, something else will pop in. And I'm like, where did that come from? And then I know that's not my, that's not mine. Is this somebody else's energy? Is this coming in because I'm tuning into somebody else's energy? What is this? I think it really takes practice, Right. And as you start to, as this information starts to come through for you, if you start to sense um, that the thought is not yours, well, where is it coming from? And uh, if you're not sure, ask the question, you'll receive the answer, right? Mm -hmm. But cultivating that awareness and becoming the observer of your thoughts instead of just kind of being like, well, I don't know where this came from and then just kind of dismissing it right? I mean, you don't have to attach to it, but just cultivating the awareness of your thoughts. And then eventually, hopefully, because it's kind of cool, you'll just find yourself having these conversations with your higher self throughout the day. And it's really, it's kind of fun. I love it. Yeah, it's yeah, really absolutely. Well, yep. and, and um, a lot of it's really subtle. So learning yeah. to trust in the subtlety. You know, we all want it to be this big booming voice, a billboard in our minds. This is God, take a left, (laughs) you know, it's not how it works. It's this nudge, it's an inkling, it's a wondering, it's a just sort of a guiding feeling. And I will say, um, because it comes up a lot, you know, the voice of spirit to me, of of God, our spirit guides, whatever, however you perceive it to be, always, always without, um, without um, fail, sounds loving sounds yeah. supportive sounds calm you know it's it's never going to tell you to do something harmful it is always only and ever to uplift to enlighten to empower yeah. period it comes from a space of love anything less that's your wounded ego that's your subconscious programming that's your fears perhaps a mental illness i mean you know the voice of spirit will never tell you to do anything harmful or dark or scary, you know, I've never run into anything dark or scary in any of this work ever. You know, if you are focused on the light, if you are living the light, you're living love, you're living your truth, you know, for the highest good for everybody involved, it will always lead you in a very 
comforting, sustaining, nourishing, loving way. Yeah, exactly. And on that note, any thought that comes up that is not that feeling of right love or you're being taught something that it's enlightening, that loving feeling, then um, you can you can choose not to accept it, right? Because I've dealt with, I have dealt with that. Um, anxiety, depression, things like that, or feeling, you know, not worthy or whatever, when that stuff comes in, it's allowing you to look at that. And then in that moment, you can choose, is this, is this really who I want to be? Is this really um, an aspect of myself, right? that mm -hmm. I want to hold on to. And then right. that moment you choose, no, you know, this is no longer something that I want to claim for myself. Um, right. So we're constantly choosing, you know, moment to moment of what we're going to accept is true for ourselves. And if something Absolutely. dark comes in, I've noticed that I'll get, and it happens a lot around portals and stuff. I'll, I'll have some dark stuff that comes in sometimes. And I automatically know that's not, that's not my energy um and then i can just kind of release it so i don't hold on to any of that um right. well and it's like you said becoming the observer you know yeah. we all get so invested and entrenched in our human story in the earthly experience there is so much more to each and every one of us than just the physical than just this earthly story than just the roles we're playing you know yeah. we are eternal soul beings we don't get a soul when we die we are a soul. We are temporarily, temporarily, excuse me, housed in this physical body for the purpose of experience, of co-creation, of joy. Believe it or not, I believe life is supposed to be good. Life is supposed to be joyful. We are here to co-create. As I, you know, you, you mentioned some of the the works that you follow. I'm a huge um, proponent of Esther Hicks. Her work, the Law of Attraction books, her YouTube videos, man, they are fantastic. They have really empowered me, and they help me catch myself in those thought and emotion loops, those patterns we all get into that, you know, just feed it. There's a wonderful book called The Inner Matrix by Joey Klein, where he talks about the, the neurochemistry of our emotions. You know, if we feel a wave of sadness, that the neurochemical reaction of that emotion will only last 90 seconds. If, and it's a big if, right? If we don't start feeding it and nurturing it with all the thoughts to defend it, to explain it, to ourselves, oh, well, yeah, I'm sad because of this, because of this, because of this, and this made me mad. And well, there goes the day. And we're all so excellent at doing that. We get stuck in these destructive thought emotion patterns. Um, and yeah, we may be right, but it's not constructive. It doesn't serve us. And so as we're able to step back, you know, take a breath, view it as an observer and say, you know what? Yes, that happened but I don't want to promote it and propagate it and nourish it and keep it coming. I want to flip the script. I want to take my power back from my energy. Mm -hmm. I, all of the thoughts, all of the emotions are choices we're making all day long. And, you know, I've actually in a meditation, um, I call it the, the inner mean girl. There are lots of words we could call it, but I, I've actually had to put it to slice the duct tape across her mouth in a meditation. Like, stop. I've heard enough. That doesn't serve me. You've had 40 plus years. You've been running the show and it's mostly not kind things. I'm, you know, we're all very critical of ourselves, right? We're never good enough or worthy enough, as you mentioned. And so just flipping the script, taking the power back is so important. And just accepting this idea that we are innately worthy. We are perfectly imperfect. We are enough. You don't have to listen to that by all means. If we can make our own heads a nice place to be, We've already won. I think that may be one of the greatest lessons we're here to learn, one of the greatest victories, is to reject other people's limiting beliefs, other people's fears and doubts and insecurities, because we project them on each other all the time. We just do, we all do it. Yeah. We do it to our kids, we do it to our friends, we do it to ourselves perpetually. And so I think any tool you can find, and by all means, explore them all. You know, for me, it's Reiki. That was really what opened yeah. up my energetic awareness. But there's Qigong, biofeedback, EMDR, tapping, hypnosis, homeopathy, acupuncture, you name it. There's a million things out there and keep exploring until you find what works for you because it's different for everybody. Thank God, how boring would it be, right? Yeah. And you know, I mean, it's really 
the basis of it all is really energetic anyway, right? Because <laughs> I everything's like, energy. Yeah. We're yeah. Made of it. Yeah. Um can so I know now everybody listening knows that you are a psychic medium. So I want to yeah. go back to medical Reiki sure. real quick. Yep. So when you do because I um because I know you do distance healing and things like that. How do, mm -hmm. and I know you've been in hospitals doing medical mm -hmm. Reiki. Mm -hmm. Do you do metal when you do? I'm trying to figure out how to ask. It's really a simple question. But when you do, so when you do distance healing, are you able to do, here's a question. Are you able to do medical Reiki? Out, or do you do medical Reiki outside of a hospital yes. study? Yes. Yes. Good question. So <clears throat> medical Reiki, the certification for it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's another Reiki attunement, guided meditation, energy upgrade, certainly. Um, it's, it was also a lot about more the left brain stuff, how to work in a clinical setting within the standards and expectations of that profession. You know, what to touch, what not to touch, when to speak, where to stand, what to wear, what not to wear. You know, a lot of the basic um, OR um type rules that, you know, otherwise we wouldn't necessarily know. I mean, that's a kind of an alien environment and thank goodness it needs to be that way. They have a lot of rules and, mm -hmm. you know, they have to be so careful about germs and everything else. And um, all of those standards are in place for good reason. So a lot of the medical Reiki certification is more about that. So of course you're able to apply all of the other Reiki training in that moment. It's just making sure that you um, show up and behave properly in a, in a clinical setting. So um, I have a couple of fun stories about medical Reiki, but what really got me interested in it personally, um, I have two sons, they're both in college now. And when my older son needed to have his wisdom teeth out, uh, it was before all my Reiki training. He had four dry sockets. He swelled up like a watermelon. He needed special medication. It was just really traumatic for everybody. He was in terrible pain. It went on and on. Fast forward a few years later, um, I now have all my Reiki training and I was able to be in the surgical suite with my younger son as he had, he had the same procedure done with the same doctor in the same building, 100% same genetics. You know, here we are, an, an experiment with a control with a variable, right? We're talking the only significant difference was that I was able to attend his procedure and administer Reiki throughout. And his experience could not have been more different he had no dry sockets, no infection, no swelling. He took nothing but Advil. He was rock climbing three days later and eating almonds within the week. Um, and I thought, oh, there's something to this. Surely other people have noticed. And that's when yeah. I found Raven Keys. And there's this wonderful book by Anne Baldwin called Reiki and Clinical Practice. And God bless her. It's a, it's a big collection of all this wonderful empirical data explaining, documenting, the efficacy of Reiki in clinical settings. So of course we know in Reiki, what we're doing partially is we're stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system. It helps people shift out of that busy beta brainwave, that fight or flight response that's dumping cortisol in their bodies and wreaking all sorts of havoc. And we can actually measure how it is stabilizing their vital stats. So um, it improves heart rate variability, it stabilizes blood pressure, it, um, tends to reduce pain, reduce muscle tension, um, tends to um, relieve a lot of the complications. Uh, people tend to heal faster. They need shorter hospital stays, all these wonderful things. And I say, gosh, whatever works, it's not an either or, it's an and. It's let's use all of the tools at our disposal. This is not taking anything away from the miracles of modern medicine. God bless them. What a genius incredible bunch of earth angels we have working for us in in the you know modern medical setting i'm not taking anything away from it and let's use some of these integrative therapies whether it's reiki sound healing you know any of the other wonderful stuff i mentioned everything we can do you know especially these days when everyone's worried about the opioid crisis you know if we can help people feel somewhat empowered in their own care, in their own healing. You know, that's something we step into a, a, a medical setting, especially into the OR when we're under anesthesia. 
we feel powerless. Like we've utterly given away our power and we're just trusting in these wonderful people, you know, to do their best work. And so anytime we can feel empowered, it, it aids our, our healing immensely. So that's part of the reason I get really excited about um, Reiki in clinical settings. So, and, and there's over 800 facilities across the U.S. right now who are using it in their integrative medical departments. A lot of the time it's still volunteer. You know, there is a, a insurance code for um, energy medicine, but none of the insurance companies recognize it yet. It's coming, you know, with more and more of these empirical studies, but um, lots of big name places use it. So MD Anderson, <clears throat> Sloan Kettering, the Mayo Clinic, um, Harvard, Duke, Yale, they're all um, realizing and coming to understand that this isn't just placebo effect. There's something else going on here. And I recently actually had a um, experience where I was able to see this in action at the hospital. So um, I had a friend who, bless him, had a Widowmaker heart attack. I mean, by all means, came very, very close to transitioning to the other side, made it to the hospital, drove himself, crazy, stubborn man. But <laughs> he, he texted me that morning and said, hey, I'm in the hospital. I've had a heart attack. Can you come see me and give me some Reiki? And it just worked out you know, beautifully. We know there are no coincidences. That was the morning I was at the hospital um, working in the oncology infusion center, giving Reiki to people as they receive their chemotherapy infusions because it helps offset the side effects of chemotherapy. And I said, gosh, yeah, I'm right here. I'll be right up. And this was so amazing. And thank goodness, I'm so grateful he had a heart attack. <laughs> He's fine, by the way, I can say that. Um, because he was hooked up to 8,000 different machines, monitoring his heart rate, his blood pressure, his all of this wonderful stuff. And as I administered the Reiki, I watched his vital statistics change on the monitors. What a cool opportunity, right? I mean, here I am, my left brain loves to see this stuff. I love to read the empirical analytical data and understand the science behind this. I love understanding as much as I can in my limited you know, <laughs> intellectual capacity for some of this stuff um, to see the actual physiological effects of energy healing. It just, it's profound, it stuns me and I'm so grateful. There was your validation. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So All it's right. definitely coming. Yeah. So I know you have to get into your studio because you have some folks coming to see you today for some Reiki and stuff. Um, is there I'm gonna leave your information, the description box, right to your website because you have so many wonderful offerings. Um, and then of course up on my YouTube channel as well. So if people want to reach out reach out to you um i really for anybody listening i promise you reiki is not some woo woo modality i used <laughs> to think that it's very very um valid of course if you don't believe that it's going to work right our beliefs really trump you know can trump a lot of things in our life if we don't really believe in something um, but if you're interested in it, give it a try, right? Mm -hmm. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing it in person, try distance Reiki. Yep. That is just as profound for me. I like, I like doing distance Reiki more than I enjoy doing it in person. Um, I think that's just my personality for me. I can really tap in more. Um, so distance healing, um, mm -hmm. is available. And Julie has uh, something called Soul Journey Sundays, which I would like for you, if you could just talk about that just for a couple of minutes before sure. we leave, because that, um, I think that's so, it's so wonderful what you've done with that and getting, um, you know, groups of people together. So sure. yeah, let's thanks. talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Soul Journey Sundays, gosh, I started that about two years ago. We do it once a month. And it just began as a collection of, um, my colleagues, my friends that were giving me amazing readings, you know, as we swapped in our classes, in our workshops and seminars and mentorships. And of course it was a, you know, spirit nudge. It was an inspired thing. And it's grown from, I think, six or seven readers at our first event several years ago now to over 50 readers. And so everyone who comes, all the ticketed participants are guaranteed two readings from two different intuitive artists. And it's everything from 
you know, psychic and mediumship to Oracle and tarot to shamanic Akashic records readings to spirit art, you know, you name it. It's this incredible collection of people who um, are showcasing their gifts and talents and skills. And, um, you know, we have people who come back month after month after month because yeah. they want to work with every person and experience their different modalities and, and how they're working. It's only $45. It's a screaming deal, really. Um, we lead everyone in a guided meditation. We go into breakout rooms. So it's personal. You know, it's not in front of the whole group. That's how we're able to guarantee everyone to readings. And, you know, the feedback we get is, is pretty, pretty amazing. And um, the website is souljourneysundays.com. And you can go in, there's a bio there for each and every one of the readers. So say you got to work with someone, but it was just a 15 minute reading. And wow, I would really, really like to do a follow up one on one session with them. Um, you can do that. Um, at the bottom of the page, we have this wonderful events calendar. So you don't have to go to 50 different websites to see what's out there. You know, I'm fascinated. I want to learn this. I want to try that. I want to experience this. Um, we've got everything from classes and workshops to book clubs and retreats and demonstrations and guided meditations, everything in between to support you on your soul's journey, on your, you know, enlightenment and, and development. So there's a ton of great stuff, uh, great opportunities and wonderful gifted people all over the world who are working with Soul Journey Sundays now. I think um, our readers stretch from Hawaii to England <laughs> currently and everything in between. So our next event is um, September 24th. As I mentioned, we do it monthly and you can always go to the website and we sell tickets via Eventbrite. And um, yeah, I would encourage anyone to come. Uh, it's a nice you know, monthly check-in. It's just a little dip your toes in. Maybe you've never done it before. These are highly trained, heart-centered, soul abundant, vetted, experienced readers. You know, when you when you go to someone, I always say be skeptical, but receptive. Um, you, you need discernment uh, across our lives, of course, but especially in this work, in this arena. You know, I've never run into anyone who wasn't doing it for the right reasons, you know, but our goal is always to heal. That's at the basis of everything we do. Like I mentioned, uplift, enlighten, and empower. No one's ever going to tell you anything dark or scary or doom or gloom or any of that, you know, we're here to serve, to serve our, our sitters and to serve spirit. And that's why we do it. So, yep. well, and you can get to that from my website too. Sorry. Yeah. I've done a handful of, uh, I've attended a handful of them and I've always had a wonderful, uh, Good. experience. Yep. And then you offer, uh, Reiki, right. I in do. your yep. studio and, um, distance Reiki, correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you offer, readings yeah um yeah. many readings so you ha have a handful of things that you offer yourself yeah, yeah. i do good. psychic readings and i do yeah. soul journey readings that's where we're inviting glimpses of past lives and spirit guides and spirit animals i never know where we're going it's always a fun adventure and of course mediumship readings where we're reaching yeah. out to loved ones in spirit and you know i teach year round so yeah. you know if, whether it's because you're interested in energy healing to heal yourself or others after the first class you can offer it to others as well or if you're interested in Reiki to help open up your intuitive capacity, certainly I, I teach it with both of those intentions. Yeah. Um, and and uh, honestly, I, I am, have now been given the opportunity to teach at Lilydale, which is this wonderful little iconic community in upstate New York um, where the suffragette movement really started and it's um, a town of mediums and it's just this lovely little whimsical place. So every summer now, hopefully um, going forward, I'll also be teaching Reiki in Lilydale, and um, I offer you know several international retreats. Where I'm going to Costa Rica in December. I'm going to Japan in March, April. You know all these wonderful um, techniques that people can explore, whether it's Reiki or Qigong or meditation or breath work or you know um, developing their own intuitive um, healing abilities, sound healing, all of that. Um, you know, I've just sort of said to Spirit, "Hey, I've got a passport." Let's go. Let's make it amazing. Let's heal the world one chakra at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right. So anything else you'd like to add before we before we close? Goodness. Yeah, just, you know, come visit my website, please. It's soaringheartsenergies.com. Um, you can read a little bit about me if you're interested and about all the stuff I'm offering and all the wonderful people I'm working with and uh, anything we can do to support you in, in your own healing journey in, in your own um, intuitive awareness. I, I do teach in intuitive development as well, but gosh, there's so much good stuff out there. If, if you feel like something's missing, 
if you feel like there should be something more, it shouldn't just be earn money, pay the bills, run the errands, take care of the kids, sleep, repeat, you know, there really is, it's, it's a little bit magical. And, and I think if we can find those modalities, those people, those groups, like you said, that we resonate with, that light us up, that bring us back to our spark and to the truth of our light and the love that we're made of. And if we can put that out into the world, then man, we've done something good with our lives. Yeah. And you know what I found? If you're open to it, when you're ready and you're open to it, you don't necessarily have to go searching. Right. Because They'll find you. <laughs> they will find you. That's what happened mm -hmm. to me with both yep. my coaches, right? With my with you. People, they will find you. You'll mm -hmm. encounter people and you know, if they resonate with you, you'll just know. Right. Yep. It's the right time for me, for me yep. to try it. All right. Trust the nudges and the signs and the synchronicities. Yep. Exactly. That's, that's how it works. <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have awesome. a wonderful rest of the day. I know you're going to be helping some people out today. So thank, thank you so much. And I'll, I'll be yeah. seeing you very soon, hopefully in the next month or two. I hope so. Always good to see you, Lena. Thank you so much for having me. Lynn. All right. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.